All righty, Robbie G and everyone out there, happy Wino Wednesday. Happy Wino Wednesday. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How are you, Robbie? Let's get to it. Yeah. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's this that is, time. It is that time. Wino Wednesday number 21. 21. Right? Can you believe? Wow. We're getting into the more obscure wines We now. are. Now it's like <laughs> we're digging. We're going to dig into these, yes, the very obscure, uh, but very delicious wines. Welcome, everybody. My name is Gina. And I'm Robbie G. And we welcome you to Wine and Wednesday 21, our featured varietal today, Torrantes. It's Vino Miercole. Wait, what's Wednesday in Spanish? Oh, is I know it, it in um, Italian. Is it Miercoles? Miercoles. <laughs> Mercoles, okay. Maybe? Or is that Friday? No, Friday's the No, because um, Italian, how similar it is? Mercoles. Yeah. Uh, 21. 21. Oh, well done. 21. Thank you. Thank you. I took Spanish and <laughs> That's why he's the school. professor. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's why he's the professor. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited for this, Rob, because... Me too. A, I don't know much about this Torrantes, other than, you know, now tasting and learning. And B, I love the Spanish cheeses that we put with it, and we'll tell you why we did that. All I knew about this wine is it's a wine that we've carried often in our Del Mar shop, and I know it's a great wine for happy hours, for, for warm... Um, sunny San Diego days. It's exactly. Sort of like uh, how we how we sell it, how we present it. It is. It is. It's one that we keep because they love it so much. The divas up in Del Mar, um, they keep. I want to call it on tap <laughs> in our Piazza you know, del Formaggio. There are places have that have wine on tap. Wine on tap. Though. We should consider. So mm. talk to the CFO. Yeah. <laughs> wine on tap. I need one in here. <laughs> Let alone do, a door. Just do like right, right to the mouth. <laughs> it's just really sad. Cheese whiz, wine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like your thinking though. Well, we already have Jason, Kristen, a couple of regulars on. Thank Welcome. you for joining us again. Hope this is going to be a new and fun one for you. For those of you who are new to our little tasting adventure, uh, if you have a YouTube channel, feel free to jump, jump on the live chat. I'm going to try to monitor that, make sure we answer all your questions. Uh, and if you don't have live chat, well, um, hopefully we answer your questions anyway. <laughs> and if you're new, if this is your first Wino Wednesday, you need to go back and get caught up. There's 20 more that you have to watch, 20 bottles of wine you have to drink as, as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> as fast as you can. <laughs> okay. I mean, we'll give you a couple months to get to get caught up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But welcome, everybody. Okay. Should we, should we tell them about the cheese first? Let's identify first them, yes. Before we get into the vino? Mm hmm so there are, uh, let's see, four cheeses mm -hmm. and a little paste on your plates. We're gonna go, uh, we're, we tricked you this time. We're gonna go a little bit out of the order that's on your lid. The Torta del Cazar, which is gonna, the, the first one listed on your, uh, on your lid, we're gonna do that last. But it is the soft cheese with the kind of orangish rind on it. So again, we're gonna do that cheese last. You'll definitely wanna hold off on that one. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reason for that. The <laughs> second cheese, which is the Monte Alve Hoven, is the white cheese. It's a firm, kind of semi-firm texture, but it's um, the best way to identify it is that it's white in color, and that's because it's goat's milk. We'll get into that. Yeah, and it's hanging out by the olives. Same. By the olives, yep. yeah, touching mm -hmm. the olives. The, the next one is going to be La Gruta Tres Leches, and it's a triangle shape, and it's a little bit off-white in color. It's more of a... You know, like a like a straw color. And hands off that one, bub. I'm gonna eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your favorite? I love it. That's another fun Just one saying. and a unique one. And uh, and then the last one on your um, on your lid here is the Mahone Reserva, and that one is a really dry one that's chunked up in little little rocks. Yeah, the gold nuggets. Yeah. Gold nuggets. Gold nuggets. nuggets. I like it. <laughs> We're gonna give you a lot of nuggets of information today. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, oh, but without further ado, a toast to you, to Wednesdays, to wine. Let's see what we think of this Torontes. I don't know if I've, um, if I've ever had it before, other than here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This but one, this. Well, delish. Yeah, because you could just, like you said, you could sit it out, sit outside on the like porch, sit at the pool, and just nibble, nibble. It's really um, minerally to me. Mm, interesting. Not too sweet at all. Uh, not too fruity. Definitely has mineral-like qualities. Torrantes, Argentinian. Argentinian. This is so. This is a. It's a white grape variety. Mm -hmm. It. Uh, it's connected to originates in Argentina, and of course, there. I know that Argentina is heavily influenced by, by Spain 
and uh, by techniques that come from Spain. Yeah. And uh, the, a lot of the regions are even named after Spanish regions. Mm -hmm. That's why we picked all Spanish cheeses, by the way, if you're wondering. Yes, <laughs> our, our attempt at semi-terroir seems to be good. In uh -huh. our whole history, Rob, uh -huh. of uh, Benissimo, 17 plus years, mm -hmm. one South American cheese through the doors. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? It was called Zuleta. I do remember yeah. Zuleta. Yeah, it was a beautiful cheese, kind of semi-firm and had whole peppercorns in it. Yeah. Um, so to me, it was, it was reminiscent of like um, the Pepado, an Italian style cheese with the peppercorns. That's the only time we ever got a South American cheese in. So it's, they're very hard to come by. So Spanish is going to be closest. There are so many great cheeses from Mexico, Central America, South America. The problem is that we, we just don't really have access to them here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's, it's not what we do. We're the end of the line. We're the retailer. So it, we're <laughs> not the ones who go out and get them or import them. That's other people's job and we'll, we'll leave it to them. <laughs> but <laughs> if and when they become available, we'll, we'll be all over it. I, you know, I, I, I've read some stuff because I didn't know a lot about Tor Toronto mm -hmm. yeah, either. Exactly. Um, but uh, it, it is sort of like what we were saying. My, my first impression was it is uh, bright. It is uh, like kind of medium body, medium acidity. Um, it's interesting that you say that it's minerally, which yeah. is kind of more of an old world characteristic. Mm -hmm. Even though it's pretty young varietal, right? A pretty young yeah. grape. Yeah, but it's um, it gets described as uh, as bright and light, and yeah. um, the they say that the the flavor itself is usually more dry, and the smell has Definitely. more of a sweet. I agree. Thing mm -hmm. going on. Well done. Yeah. I would totally agree with that. <laughs> and I, so I saw Surprising. some of the, you know, they always use uh, descriptors and they, they compare them to certain fruits. So I saw a lot of stone fruit, um, mm -hmm. peach. citrus, peach, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Apricot, something like that. Um, but I, I love it. This is just easy, easy drinking. Um, the Toronto is great. There's actually three kind of grapes in that family, mm -hmm. um, all kind of of Spanish origin, um, but grown in the higher altitudes of Argentina. So this grape is a little more hardy. It can, in, it can withstand those colder temperatures and everything, which I think is what keeps it from getting too sweet. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't get hot enough. Uh, it doesn't yeah. it, you know, develop all those sugars. Yeah. Um, so it becomes this, this dry, dry wine. So this is actually um, Spain's kind of signature wine. Mm -hmm. And the one that you're gonna find everywhere, if, I'm not Spain, excuse me, Argentina. Um, the one that you'll find everywhere, just kind of your um, table wine. Table wine again, which I hate. You know, I just really just need a better term. <laughs> it's your everyday, the one that I love. I was yeah. trying to, to describe yeah. that term and what's really meant by it at, at an event this weekend, and I said that table wines are what kind of what Europeans they they, they think of table wines as just food. It's part of the meal, and it's it's mm -hmm. they're versatile. They kind of go with everything, yeah. as opposed to. A, a you know like a happy hour wine mm -hmm. which is the big cab stand on its own that has a higher um, yeah. alcohol percentage that's a really good way to think of you it. know mm -hmm. i mean we're it's it's those big reds that we have a couple glasses of on a friday night before dinner to get a little buzz <laughs> a little <laughs> or a lot of a buzz <laughs> or however you want to drink it but th that they're sort of thought of differently but uh, think of table wines more as food or part of the meal yeah. Um, so they're they're terrific for pairing. They're usually high acidity mm -hmm. and lower alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, you you mentioned the three different um, types of of Torontas. Mm -hmm. the The main type is called Riojano. Okay. And that's Riojano. most everything is Riojano, and I assume that this is a Riojano. Um, oh, let's look for sure. Yeah. And uh, you're right. They're, so they when when they talk about uh, you know sweet wine sweet wines are really ripe um, wines. It's because mm -hmm. They come from hot regions because the sun will ripen the grape further yes, intensely. and it, it brings out mm -hmm. more of the sugar as, right. as it ripens. Mm -hmm. So that's why like the, the New World or California wines tend to be more more sweet, the, the reds especially, than the, uh, the Burgundies and Bordeaux. Yeah, right, and which like are so that. dry. It's, it's so interesting. It's fascinating. I was reading yeah. too about the elevation on this one and it's made at about 760 meters. Okay. What is that so, now? Do you know what that means? About times three. <laughs> Just less than three, right? It's, um, well, it's exact, exactly 3.37. 3.3. Oh, so I was close. So can you do that math in your head? No. Would you do it again? 760? 760. 21 times, times 3.37. Well, yeah, ish. probably about that. Which is Good enough. less than a half a mile. Well, yeah. So it's, it's, still, yeah. Uh, it's still less than 3,000 feet. Okay. And so. to put that in perspective, um, what's the... Uh, what's Denver's 5,000 something. Yeah, that's a mile high. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> but um, like uh, K2 and the Himalayas are, you know, 29,000, oh, yeah, 30,000 mm -hmm. feet. So it's not no quite that No grapes growing up there. That's what I'm going to do. Let's move to the Himalayas. <laughs> grow grapes. You want to be a Sherpa? <laughs> I want to be a Sherpa and grow grapes. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> and it, so I'm glad you like it. This is, um, to me, this seems like the, the almost the perfect wine, uh, perfect white to, to go with cheese. And we'll see how they oh, balance yes. out. Yes. Also with, um, I read, and I think it would be good, um, spicy Asian mm -hmm. or Thai type dishes, yeah. this one goes real well. Which is interesting to me because also sweet Rieslings and things go well with mm -hmm. that too, but this one's so dry. I'm now dying to try it with that, but I know it goes good with the cheeses. It's so interesting you say that. So mm -hmm. when I looked up this this varietal and, and what it pairs with, everything said spicy. Asian food, yes, Thai, spicy, spicy, spicy. Indian. So just another another tip, this is far from Indian and Thai <laughs> or anything from, like that, yeah. but we're gonna see how it does with this. Yes. Well, let's go, let's go. Shall we get um, into it? Which All right. one first? Which so one first? practice your self-control and hold off on the... On the Torta um, del Casar, yeah, the soft. Yeah, the name of it. Torta, Torta del mm -hmm. Casar, <laughs> the soft. Definitely wait. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with the Monta Alva Hoven. That's and the white one, the very, very white. I mean, really, really white. <laughs> there's uh, two uh, triangular pieces. Our piece is really sweating because it's been sitting out, mm -hmm. which is good. Which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's got a little natural rind on it. Which you, probably, can... you won't like it. Just let me eat it. I'm so hungry. Come <laughs> <laughs> down. Come down. Yeah. Mm. But how fun is that? Mm. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fun is the right word. I love it. Why is it so white? Okay. Professor. Hold on, let me clean my fingers off here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Monta Alva Hoven mm -hmm. is a goat's milk cheese, 100% goat's milk. It is, it's from Spain. This is from southern Spain. It's from a region called Andalusia, which is, uh, it's a huge region. It's almost like the, the bottom half of, of the country of Spain. And um, I, I need to look at a better map of Spain. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, so it it's huge. Mm -hmm. And the, if you go all the way down to the southern tip of that region, there's the Strait of Gibraltar, and there's the the Rock of Gibraltar, and then right on the other side is Morocco. Mm -hmm. And so there's mm -hmm. a, it's it's a really interesting part of the world. And um, the the Moors came up from northern Africa into Spain. They went all the way through Spain, and so. If you, if you ever get a chance to visit, some of you probably have been there, they have all these amazing cathedrals slash synagogues slash mosques everywhere. A blend. And they're like, nice. they're also citadels, they're also like these fortresses. So there's um, Alhambra, which is in, um, that's in Granada, I believe. Yeah, and I Al think you're right. Alcazar is another one and another big also city. Famous. But those are all in this region, Andalusia. And it's, it's a more arid and a drier place. We don't get a lot of cheeses from there, but what we do get are goat and sheep's milk yeah. because they thrive in those conditions. In the dry, 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 dry. Can you hand me the lid, please? Oh, yeah. I can't spell this one without it. <laughs> <laughs> Monte Alva Hoven, me, it means young goat. And uh, this is fairly young, and I, I did not forget your question about the color. Okay, yes. <laughs> the, um, so the color from cheeses comes from the diet of the animal. And um, there's something called beta carotene, uh -huh. which exists in the plants, in the vegetation that they eat, that they graze. And um, sheep and cows uh, will, along with goats, they all ingest this beta carotene in the, in the plants that they eat. Cows and sheep do not use all of that vitamin. So interesting. And yeah. so some of it comes out in their milk, and you see the color difference in the, the cheeses. You can, in fact, look at the, the the next cheese which is la gruta and you see a light a kind of a kind of a difference in color and you can even see how it changes as it gets closer to the rind where this one was so white yeah I mean, yeah so goats beta carotene, okay. goats actually use all of the vitamin the beta carotene and so none of it none of it comes out uh in, in their milk they they basically use all of it up so okay. their their milk in their cheese always looks white. bone white mm -hmm. And that's that's actually a good indicator. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to sort of identify goat, goat cheese. cheeses. Truly, yeah. If if a goat mm -hmm. cheese is colored, I mean, if it has color to it, it's been colored. It's been dyed. Kind of. I can't talk. <laughs> it's been, I swear, it's just water. It's not vodka. Uh, okay. It just, it gets. Um, it, it will. There is a dye that they that they put into certain cheeses. 
Cheddars are famous for that, some mm-hmm. Goudas. And there are goat cheeses that they will dye with a natural dye, but, yeah. um, but naturally they will be a complete white. white in color. So good. And we have our friend George mm-hmm. online. And George, I agree. I've had this, this um, Montalva, the goat, with both the olives and you guys, these are called pipara peppers. Mm. Delicious. They're not spicy, spicy peppers. But olives go great with goat always. I always think of goat cheeses to be kind of green in flavor. Yeah, totally. No, <laughs> you know? Good. Yeah? So green olives, just olives in general. And then these peppers go so good with the goats. Always. This is so Spanish to have. This is like a tapa situation. I would, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh-huh. I'm saying. Just imagine being at a tapas bar in, in Spain right now. You know what I'm very proud of us for? We are at one. Let's be with one. But you know what I'm very proud mm-hmm. of us for, Gina? Yeah. What? Not putting manchego on this. <gasps> <laughs> manchego are. is a great cheese, it don't is. get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But a lot of you have had manchego. You know mm-hmm. manchego. You've probably heard us talk about manchego. Manchego is the king of Spanish cheeses. It's from a region called La Mancha. That's, mm-hmm. what, the, that's what the name means. It's always sheep's milk. But we have some good alternatives to manchego today. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, have you been to that part of Spain? No, only Barcelona. Oh. So, Cat- Catalonia. Yeah, Barcelona's yeah. Catalonia. Yes. Catalonia. And yeah. Barcelona is, uh, mm-hmm. well, Catalonia is very different from this part of Spain. It's, um, I, I feel like, Barce- to me, Barcelona, which of course is the big city in Catalonia, is a mix of San Francisco and Paris. Or maybe New yes. York and Paris. I don't know. Ooh, it's I sort would of say that. Yeah. sophisticated, mm-hmm. but it's 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 big. It's got it has that old world stuff in it, mm-hmm. um, but very chic and very. It's really cool, uh-huh, uh-huh. and it's in the kind of like foothills. If you go to the north, you you hit the Pyrenees, and then you're in France, and then if you go east, you hit the Mediterranean. So there's there's beaches and stuff. Beach, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, Eat cheese and tapas all day. Oh, okay. All the day. best time, probably, uh, the, when we went to Barcelona, are those tapa bars with mm-hmm. the toothpicks. I'm mm-hmm. counting the toothpicks was how they would charge you. Yeah, it was like two bucks a would... toothpick yes. or something. <laughs> <laughs> or two euros. Yeah, and it was like, oh, let's have a little bit. Whose toothpicks are those? Yeah. Oh, those would be mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of them. Oh, see, so yeah, I put my toothpicks on the guy next to me. Did you? Napkins. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good plan. <laughs> when in Barcelona, put your toothpicks on the other person's plate. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting with, about, about Spain. They, they're very. Just like a lot of, of course, European countries, they're very region, region proud, proud of the region that they're from, mm-hmm. and uh, so you know historically, bef- before all the modern political lines between the countries were drawn, it you know the the, the cultures from those places go back thousands mm-hmm. of years. So the Catalonians have their own language and their mm-hmm. own identity, sure. and really their own style of food and, and wine. The Basque people have their own culture and identity. Um, people in the South have their own identity, and a lot of it has to do with their history and which peoples and tribes came through at different times and sure. mixed with, with those groups. Um, Galicia has their own culture. Right. Um, own foods, yeah. own style, of, right? right? And for cheeses, mm-hmm. uh, going back to what I said earlier, in, in based on the terrain and the climate and and um, just the type of land they have, it's that's going to reflect on the, the animal types that in the milk that comes from from which places. So in Spain, the cow's milk cheeses are just from a few regions in the north and the northwest. Mm-hmm. So Galicia and um, mm-hmm. what they call um, Green Spain. So there are a couple of uh, regions right there in like the the Bay of Biscay. All right. Okay. Well, calm down. I can't stop. <laughs> okay. Between the peppers, Rob, and the olives with this, did you try that? <gasps> uh, yeah. So good. Our uh, friend Jason noticed mm-hmm. and uh, wondered, this is a very mild goat overall. It it's is. It's not goaty. And you're exactly right, Jason. It's not. It's just delicious. Should I have the pepper mm-hmm. with it? You should have the pepper with it. Yeah, I've I'm done right olives good. with it. And these olives are a mixture. It's a, med- it's a mix. So you've got some Gata olives in there. You've got some, oh my gosh, can I remember the name? It's a Spanish mix of olives, and I can't remember each and single one of them right now. This one's called Delicious, I think. Oh yeah, the Delicioso. Oh, delicioso olive. <laughs> the uh, Delicioso <laughs> olive. But yes, um, one reason that it's so mild is that it is young. Mm. I mean, and goat, young goat cheeses tend to be mild. The really fluffy chefs that we're familiar with that are such young goats mm-hmm. tend to be much more citrusy than this. This yeah. isn't, to me, again, it's green. That's why I think it goes so good with this. You'll get the goaty tang mm-hmm. on the finish usually mm-hmm. for, of these, but um, but yeah, there's um, goat cheeses are not all 
they, they don't have to be young and crumbly and tangy and citrusy. They can be various ages. I mean, we have a lot of goudas and uh, Italian goat cheeses that are aged for a year plus. So yeah. they can be, they, they totally range. Um, I was going to mention a couple other things from Andalusia. Um, Andalusia? So they, it comes from... So good together, by the way. The, the wine with the first cheese. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the, the name actually is Arabic. It's Al Andalus. Al Andalus. And it comes from the, the Moors. Um, and uh, it means land of the Vandals. And the Vandals were a tribe that came through there. And they were in a lot of places uh, in Europe. They're all, it's also home to a place called Jerez. Uh -huh. Jerez de la Frontera. And can you, if you think really hard about it, Jerez, 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 J E R E Z. What does that, Angl when it gets anglicized, what word does it turn into? It's a wine. And think of a wine that came to the United States, one of the first wines that came to the States. It's not really thought of as a very mainstream, like happy hour type of wine anymore. Maybe more affiliated with desserts. Like a sherry or mm -hmm. something, right? Yeah. Jim, there's a, with the J, that sherry. Yeah. Okay. So Jerez is the, it, it mm -hmm. turned into sherry. Mm -hmm. And it was the wine that Christopher Columbus brought over. And it was, um, it's kind of like the, one of the first wines that, in the Colombian exchange. Yeah. That oh, we got from Europe. Really? A sherry. Sherry. And that didn't catch on here. Not, which so, maybe so for a little bit at first. But not so much not so anymore. Much. But we need to write that down as a varietal because I too oh. don't know enough about cherries. And just like Rieslings, you kind of poo poo it like, oh, uh -huh. they're going to be sweet or I just don't want it. I bet you cherries are good. I'm writing it down for a future. Well, I guarantee the ones back in the day yeah. were probably sweetened because they were let. Usually, that's what they would do with wines in history. Is if they didn't if they didn't have the quality and if they're traveling you know, in a big ship for months, they couldn't have been very high quality, you know? They probably had like- In a boot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's probably like mice, you know, swimming in the tanks and stuff. Like, come on now. Right, you can't even imagine, right? <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it comes from Hedes. That's where the, okay, that's where the name- Okay, interesting, didn't know that. Comes from. Mm -hmm. <gasps> All right. But at least I passed one question from the professor. <laughs> So far, I got an A. Be ready for the test, Lou. <laughs> be ready, be ready. Be, be ready, ready for the next one. Are. Now, I don't know if I'm allowed to eat this because... I don't know. Don't touch it. I'll let you go. You have <laughs> however much you want, but it's going to be the La, La Gruta Tres Leches. I forgot the name for a moment. Oh, yeah. Rob, I love this cheese. This one's got this beautiful mm -hmm. kind of crusty looking uh, brownish rind on it. I just love it. This is a eat all day cheese. This oh. would be, I would do this in place of Manchego. Not that I have anything against Manchego. Don't but talk crap about it. I'm not going to talk crap about it because Manchego is good. What? This is delicious. Well, there's three pieces. So that means you can have two and I'll have one. <laughs> <laughs> La Gruta Tres Leches. And what does the name mean? Okay. Here's my guess. <laughs> this is La Gruta <laughs> in a cave. Uh -huh. Tres Leches, three milks. Yeah. Am I close? Yeah, you got it. Okay, yay. <laughs> this is goat, sheep, and cow's milk from the Cave of the Sun. So I don't know why. Cave of the Sun? I believe there just must be some, some rays that somehow get into this this cave. Ah. But a lot of cheeses you know, throughout history have been made and aged in caves uh, because caves are consistent with the airflow and the temperature and humidity. And uh, they still get aged in caves. And, and even, even cheeses that are aged in aging rooms, those aging rooms are, are built to basically do the same thing a cave does. So that's, caves are important. The, um, and this is unique in that it is a mix of goat, sheep, and cow's milk. I was reading, I wanted to do a little further research on that to see if it was, you know, like a 33, 33, 33 split. Oh yeah, what is the split? Well, tell me if this makes sense to you. Okay. You're because I don't know. You haven't had too oh much. My God, to drink but no, I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this whole thing in like one last. Week. Just take it easy. <laughs> There's Whoa. still three more cheese or two more cheeses. <laughs> so tell me if this makes sense to you. It's um, 60% cow's milk. It's 20% sheep's milk. 6% goat's milk. It doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing. I go. This is only 86% existing nope. because I it, it's there. I see the cheese. It exists. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be something different, but I know it, I know that it has a, just a little bit of goat's milk in it. Just a smidge. It definitely more cow. You can see by the color again. It's more that golden mm -hmm. cow milk color. 
Um, and that only takes the goat's sheep. milk in it. To be no, honest. not at, it's overpowered by the the cow and the sheep. But, but we paired this rob with the classic Ooh. Spanish accoutrement with cheese. So the paste, Kristen, you asked what we have on the plate. It's called uh, quince paste. It's membrillo. This is what they will always, always serve with manchego mm -hmm. in Spain. That just they go together like our peanut butter and jelly. Yep. Um, you will just find manchego with the quince paste. Well, we wanted to do it the La Cruz de Leches with the quince paste because it's delicious. So quince, if you've never seen it, it kind of looks like a cross between a pear and an apple. Mm -hmm. And you can't eat it raw. It's a very tart fruit. But you boil it down, you cook it down, and it becomes this beautiful jam jelly. And they make it into a paste. So um, that's what you're tasting with this. This is as Spanish as it gets. Yeah. So I'm going to try it with the wine, but on its own, <clears throat> delicious. So the fruit is quince, mm -hmm. famous from the scene in White Men Can't Jump. I don't remember that. At the end of the movie, Rosie Perez goes on Jeopardy. And one of the questions was like, name a, a, a fruit that begins with a Q. And she's like, what is a quince? <gasps> Whoa, but, well done. But, <laughs> but uh, the paste itself, when they make it into a paste or kind of a jam paste, whatever, it's called membrio. And membrio is... Membrillo is not a name brand. It, it literally means quince paste. So whatever, there's a lot of companies that make this type of a paste, but it's always called Membrillo. Always Membrillo. Mm -hmm. So our friends Jason and Megan, who you know very well. Uh -huh. Hello, hello. Jason and Megan. Uh, think this cheese, the La Gruta, and the Membrillo bring, make, the cheese, make the wine more fruity. And ah. I agree, because I just tried it myself. So it's uh -huh. a kind of complimentary. Then that's, a, the, mm -hmm. that's the fun thing about pairings, is it brings out... Um, it, 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 like wine and cheese pairing is it's supposed to, to really tap into the complexity mm -hmm. of, of both items yeah and not overshadow each other mm -hmm. they, they need to work together and these work together so far winner winner beautiful mm -hmm. chicken cheese dinner <laughs> cheese winner winner <laughs> cheese dinner I'm going to be so happy tonight I've been waiting for days to eat this and I love it this is good um, because I was yes. able to um bust out my old Spanish uh, cheese tasting outline, which I haven't done in a long time. Oh, and so, si, senor. Oh, si, I was, <laughs> che, Quesa de España. These are all Spanish cheeses, all from different regions. So this is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we, I, we didn't talk a ton about all the accoutrements. There's grapes on there. There's also apricots. The Marcona almonds are also Spanish. Yes, because uh, I think it was George noticed that we didn't have picos on here, which are ah. a super famous Spanish treat. True. Uh, but we have the Marcona almonds instead, which are fried and salted. Oh. Oh, they're too good to be true, these almonds. But what is this is telling us is between the olives, the peppers, the almonds, say the Kikos, mm -hmm. Spain has yummy, yummy foods and accoutrements that are so underrated. Yeah. I think it's the most underrated country of cheeses and foods, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, it's so bad. One, of the, one of the issues with the Spanish cheeses is that they're kind of going back to the South American and Mexican thing I was talking about, they're not as accessible as mm. some of the French and the Italian ones, which are more mainstream. And some of the ones that are accessible from Spain are similar. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? That's true. So like there's a lot of manch very, there's manchego a lot of cheeses very similar to manchego mm -hmm. or manchego style, manchego-esque. Um, so it, it, it does take a little work, but if you can, if you can find cheeses from various regions, they're so amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. they're right up there with the Spanish or the French. Did you not get to go in Catalonia to the Garrocha maker? I did, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we went to, I rented a car from Barcelona and drove north, right on the border with, with France. And I went to go see a, a cheese maker who makes a cheese called Garrocha. Mm -hmm. And it's worth talking about because it's not on your plates if you just want to hear about another fun Spanish cheese that we have usually. And it, we always have it in Del Mar. Mm -hmm. I bet Mission Hills usually mm -hmm. has it. Um, but it's a goat's milk cheese. It would be most similar to the Monte Alva Hoven. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called Garrocha. It's, it's G-A-R-R-O-T-X-A. Did I spell it mm -hmm. right? You Garrocha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's a, it's a firm goat's milk cheese. It's, mm -hmm. it's really interesting, the story of Garrocha. Um, it, it's a cheese that was made there. And like a lot of other cheeses, very region specific. A hundred years ago, a couple hundred years ago, there would have been probably two dozen cheesemakers that all made this Garrocha cheese in that area or something similar to it. Um, with um, 
when Franco came in, he wanted to, Franco was a kind of a dictator. He was the leader for, for like 50 years until I think 75 or so. Mm -hmm. When he died finally, they, um, they, they really went back to kind of like, um, so he wanted Spain to be one. So he wanted it all based in smack dab in the middle of the country, which is where Madrid is. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do away with the regionality because he thought that made them weaker. Interesting. And so when he passed away, the, the region, the cultures all kind of came back. And so people were making garrocha all through the 20th century, but they weren't able to sell it commercially to the other regions in the country or export it. Oh, wow, not and, to their own kind yeah. of region. So the cheesemaker told me about this, and he said our family had been making it, a couple other families had been making it all along, and then finally in the 80s, we were able to, to make a comeback because Franco was gone, and we were able to, to sell it, it and came. distribute it. And, yeah, and so that's it's, so good. So they survived, and that's the... Interestingly, that's the story of a lot of cheeses. I mean, they either went away for political reasons or they went away because of the Industrial Revolution where, you know, factories came in and they just started making them for, for cheaper and and, yeah. and, and and put these little farmers out of business. But uh, they stuck around and now we have we have garrocha made in the same way it would have been made hundreds of years ago. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, if I was a Spanish lady, Senorita, I would keep a wheel of either of those two cheeses on the table with a bottle of this and some quince paste and these peppers and the olives. It's and funny. Just eat it all day. You say that because right? when I went and visited the guy who made the garrocha, he gave me a couple of wheels, and he was, it was the first. It was like the first weekend I was there, so I had a couple more weeks of traveling, and I had a wheel of cheese, and I would just take it with me and just sit on the steps wherever I was and just just knock off right? pieces just of snack. cheese. Put it in your backpack. Yep, exactly. And just gnaw on it. Get your <laughs> glass of wine and sit out on this curb. How awesome is that? Our friend George Roth, we've really opened up the eyes of Spanish mm -hmm. accoutrements, just Spanish foods and how All yummy Spanish. they are. You don't have to do anything to them. This is out. Uh, Nothing has been done to these things. Oh, they are on their own. And Love speaking them. of all things Spanish, we so I talked a little bit about garrocha. We talked about manchego. The the um, la gruta tres leches is from a really famous region, but the region is not famous for cheese. Hmm. It's from La Rioja. La Rioja. Ah, we all know. Well, we have not done. Have we done? We have. I don't think we've done Rioja, no. which is another one. Put mm -hmm. it on the list. It's on the list. Mm -hmm. But um, we're having a you know a, a, a wine from Argentina, and they're they're probably our versions of this made in Spain as well. But La Rioja is definitely the most popular, the most famous sure. wine region in Spain. They even call it the Spanish Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. and, the Spanish, uh, they, they pro Spanish probably don't appreciate that. No one <laughs> wants to be the something of something. They want to be the it, right? Yeah. Or Okay, I'm Bordeaux just, is the Rioja of France. Yes. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> That's better. I think the Spanish would appreciate well, that. Well, the, re the reason that it, it gets, they get kind of <laughs> looped in together <laughs> is because Bordeaux mm -hmm. is in that southern part of France and then Rioja is northern part of Spain. So they're they're ne they're near each other mm -hmm. and pilgrims from all over Europe used to come through southern France into Spain and they would make a pilgrimage to um, to Galicia to St. James Compostela. Yeah, that's such a famous yeah. pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. People I mean even even now and so oh, yeah. as w as people would come through Europe, they would it, that was like the early form of globalization, very, very early form of it. So they, if they were a winemaker from Bordeaux and they went through another region that was known for wine, a lot of times they would teach them their methods. So cool. And mm -hmm. one of the, the things that Bordeaux is known for is aging red wines, because they, they're known for the big reds, aging wine in oak barrels. And so they kind of brought that or taught that to the folks in Rioja, and they are now known for that. And um, we, we talk about this sometimes, but the... The European product, new, oh, sorry, old world cheeses and wines will take on the name of their place yeah. and they assume you know what grape comes from there. So, do you know what grape comes from Rioja? What? You're, you're going to try to stump me, but I'm going to try to get 100%. I think you today. know this one. Tempranillo. Yeah. Yes, so far so good. <laughs> I'm going to come out. <laughs> I'm going to go out. <laughs> Tempranillo is uh, the grape from yeah, Rioja. Rioja. So, if it says Rioja, just assume it's a Tempranillo, a Tempranillo grape. Yeah. So it could be one and the same. Because you, you'll see a wine that's labeled Tempranillo, you'll also see a wine that's labeled Rioja. Exactly, yeah. And, you can, and you can find a great Tempranillo from California, from Argentina. Uh huh. Because of the grape. Yep. 
Because the grape can be grown anywhere. Just like saying <laughs> a Burgundy is, is a place, and those are True. that's Pinot mm -hmm. or Chardonnay. Yes. But you can you can find Pinot or Chardonnay in California or in Washington. It's tricky. Yeah, I think cheese is easier. It's cow, goat, or sheep. <laughs> Mostly, you know, it's in a way they're very similar. It's very similar. I mean, if you have a brie, they they'll tell you brie. Mm -hmm. And then they assume you know what kind of milk that comes from. A traditional brie is made with what? Cow. Yeah. I'm still up. Still 100%. <laughs> An alpine cheese or a Swiss style mm -hmm. cheese is oh, made cow. with cow. Cow. A, a Loire mm. Valley, um, a seltzer share is made with what? Goat. Yeah, see? Duh. So it's, it's very <laughs> similar. To us, it's like, it's just second nature because we true. know the cheese is so well. True, but, true, true. But I think for the lay you. person, it's probably helpful. It's helpful. Well, again, so great with the wine. I've tried the apricot too with the wine. I'm saving the apricot too for the next cheese, mm -hmm. but so far, Rob, so good. The, shall we oh, get into right. the next one? Let's do it. Okay. The next one is this one. It's uh, kind of yellowish. Color. Which, what does that tell us? Cow's because milk. Color. <laughs> so we know it's not goat's milk unless it's dyed. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's interesting that this is cow's milk because this is from a little island uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, kind of grouping of a four or five islands. That, um, mm -hmm. They're called the Balearic Islands, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it's Ibiza, it's Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza, and I forget the other one. It's one of the Azores. Is it part of the Azores? That's different. No, the, the Azores are... Portugal and they're on the That's right. Atlantic they're on the Atlantic mm -hmm. yeah this is in the Mediterranean mm -hmm. and uh, but I think of Ibiza because I remember that was a place for like partying and spring yeah. break and then the, the the shishi mm -hmm. mm, my gosh this is tangy mm. Mahone oh, yeah. Reserva from Mallorca you know what who else is from Mallorca <laughs> yeah who <laughs> <laughs> a certain tennis player who, could that who be? is always picking the underwear out of his butt Oh, he is. That's his. That's a signature move, though. You gotta um, admire like, Rafi. Rafi. Rafi Nadal. Rafa. Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna give you that quiz. You were. Mm -hmm. I tried to quiz you, but you were wrong. <laughs> mm. But my home, can I tell you? We stopped. Mm. We did a little Mediterranean cruise and stopped in Mallorca. Um, I didn't see Rafa though. It was a sad day. Mm. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> um, and went to a little cheese shop, and really, they just had so many versions of the Mahone there. Yeah. It was really cool. That in all the ages and mm -hmm. well, so this is interesting. I I don't I don't know how or or when they first brought the cows out to the island, but cows wouldn't be. They were definitely brought there by by people, and the the cheese is tradition. The traditional Mahones are aged for a long time. Th this one has got to be at least a year, mm -hmm. but probably more. It's so good. Is it? It's so tangy. It, um, it's really kind of like peppery to me. Peppery, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, But they're, the reason that they're they're made... Piquant. A, yeah, nice. Mm. <laughs> Pungent. Ooh, good with the wine. It's, um, the reason that they make them and age them for a long time is so that they are harder cheeses so that they, they can travel better. Because they're on this... On the like, island, yeah. Makes sense. They're on this island, so mm -hmm. they're, they're meant to be put on boats and to travel or to um, to go to other places. But uh, they, they now make... Mm different uh, different ages and so you said when you were there oh you saw them all just stacked you, up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the different ages mm -hmm. It'd be like going to um, parma and getting all the different mm -hmm. parmigianos you know from yeah three years to five years whatever just get that that completely different flavor i love that it's so sharp and tangy mm -hmm. i think it needs to go with the apricot personally to try it okay. or with the rosemary those of you that have been with us many tastings know that we love rosemary with almost everything Try it with this. I tried it before with the La Gruta. It's fabulous, but um, this is this has got a bite to it. I don't. The, to me, the young Reserva, uh, the young Mahones, don't have enough flavor. Like I, I prefer this bite when I get it. But this could be an option too, Parmigiano, like yeah. put it on pasta or right. I have to agree. When I we've had the young Mahones before, and they're they're okay. They just don't stand out a, a lot to me. When you have, um, you know, we so we. We have a lot of cheeses that come through our cases, and if it doesn't stand, like if it's not spectacular, it's really hard to stand out because they have a lot of competition. Yes, there's so many that do stand out. You just don't know which ones to keep, right? And now this one does mm -hmm. stand out. It's different. Yeah. Um, it's especially different 
for a Spanish cheese in that it's an aged cow's milk. You just don't see a lot of cheeses mm -hmm. like this. No, from so Spain. it's a special treat. Mm -hmm. And from the island of Mallorca. Okay, I'm doing it with rosemary and an apricot. Mm. Delish. So I'm gonna, mm -hmm. get, I'm gonna get into mm -hmm. some Marconas. Our friend Kristen loves it. And with the wine, it's good too. So, so far, because we have the ultra mild um, goat, the ult the beautiful La Gruta, and now this really sharp, tangy uh, Mahone, and all of them have worked well with this wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's and also that's... interesting because a cheese like the Mahone, you would, uh, any book would say yeah. to pair it with a, with a big red wine. And, and you can, it would work. You, it mm -hmm. would. It would. It would stand up to that. Mm -hmm. So a Rioja. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be a total Rioja cheese. Mm -hmm. It would be perfect for that. But you know, break all those rules. And, and so <laughs> this would this would be breaking the, the rule. But you can see how good it still is. It's more. It becomes more of a contrasting or balancing pairing. Try it with the rosemary. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. I can't stop everybody. I'm so <laughs> sorry because I, why am I so hungry? But with the Did rosemary, lunch? it's amazing. And with the wine, uh, molto buono. Super bueno. good. It's oh, really good. Something. It's really good. My Spanish is no bueno, <laughs> <laughs> but I try. But I don't because I don't know it. It's How can I try? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You're you're still trying. I'm learning. And that's okay. And so far, I'm 100% half professor. <laughs> so yep, far, so are. good. <laughs> you have an A. <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm like excited, kind of scared, me too, nervous about this Let's next talk about one. This. Mm -hmm. So the next cheese is I'm gonna hold it up. Yeah, it's sticking to our plate, which is good. Yeah. It's this one, mm -hmm. and it's um, boy, it's got a really cool. natural kind of firm rind on it. The, Look how runny it is. Whoa. The paste looks like what I would what would you call that texture? It's like a velvety kind of. But it's slippery too. It's it's shiny. <laughs> it's not frosting like because it's too shiny. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It almost <laughs> Vaseline. I don't Vaseline. know. I don't <laughs> I don't mean it. It, it. It's not gonna taste like it's not gonna taste like Vaseline. <laughs> not that I've eaten Vaseline. Get that it's out very of your head. shiny. Everyone's got take a can you smell it though before you even take you taste it first. Take a sniff of it. Can you smell how weird it is? Yeah. To me, because mm -hmm. this crosses the line of port Spanish and Portuguese uh -huh. cheeses. Yep. This crosses into what Portugal is known for, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. This is um, Torta del, del Casar. I want to see if I have the, the, what the name means in front of me. Um, the name comes from from yeah. Casar del Cas Casetas, which is the city it comes from. Um, it's always made with um, a breed called Merino sheep. So this is our sheep's milk cheese, full sheep's milk. Full sheep, hundred percent. La Gruta had a yeah. little sheep's milk. Um, but this is from a region in Spain called Extremadura. Mm -hmm. And Extremadura is, it's in the south uh, west part of the country and it borders Portugal. And it's a lot of the, a lot of the region is wildlife and national parks. And it's not that, it's not a place where you tourists go a lot. And, um, but there, there are sheep and the cheeses that come from there are mostly like this, and these are really more like the cheeses you would see in Portugal. So there's something really interesting that they do. Have you tasted it yet? <laughs> I had a little like scrape of it. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, um, go on. But what they do for these is instead of using rennet, animal rennet, to coagulate the milk, because usually for cheese, you take liquid milk, you drop in rennet, and the cheese turns into curds and whey, solids and liquid. Mm -hmm. Um, and so instead of using animal rennet to, to perform that function, they discovered at some point in history, I don't know how, why, I, it makes no sense to me, but if you squeeze the, like the cardoon thistle flower, mm -hmm. a little Which juice. Which looks like a thistle. <laughs> yeah. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful flower, actually. Yeah. But if you squeeze it, a little bit of juice comes out, and that will do the same thing that rennet does to the milk. Isn't that crazy? This property, mm -hmm. <laughs> this <laughs> elemental property. I don't know how they figured it out, but the but it gives it a little bit of a of a unique texture, and that's that Vaseline texture. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I, don't mean, I don't know, I don't know, I just couldn't think of another. No, that's good. That's actually pretty lotion? good. Lotion. And lotiony, <laughs> it's kind of lotiony. It's shiny. <laughs> and uh, Ooh, that flavor is strong. But it's it's a mix of sheep's milk mm -hmm. and the the thistle rennet, and uh, and then it's got a, like a washed rind on it. 
all of that just gives sort of like a really vegetal kind of oh yeah vegetal is the way to describe this because of that rennet that i mean that's Truly, when, when you mm -hmm. think of rennets, like we have vegetarian rennets that are used, mm -hmm. uh, animal rennets, and usually rennet doesn't make a difference to the flavor of the cheese, one way or the other. All it is is there to separate the curds from the whey, except in the case of the thistle, um, which makes these cheeses so distinctive in flavor. Rob's right, vegetal. To me, they're artichokey. Uh -huh. Maybe that's because the thistle looks like a baby artichoke. <laughs> I mean, it's a tiny head. little thing. It might be in the head. But these are distinctive and they are sharp and, and you have to, I think this is an acquired taste this, that I personally might not have yet acquired. Don't tell my Portuguese friends. What <laughs> well, do you think? Or your Spanish Extremaduran friends. Extremaduran friends. Well, what do you think? You know what it's else I very think unique. has a, the look of? It's uh -huh. a little bit like soapy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> None of these are like good words. And oh my god, so I must have made a face because Jason said that they made the same face that I did when they ate it. Because it's so weird, right? It's so different. And it's not that it's bad, it's just super different. To me, even the blues, you know what to expect when you eat a blue cheese, I think. But you don't know what to expect when you get a bite of that, right? That is new mm -hmm. and different. And it's, it's even kind of like, Barnyard, you know? Super Barney. Yeah. And I don't know, sorry if you can hear the music real quick, we're gonna digress. Do you hear the music in the background? Is there a band walking by? Have you seen this downtown, everybody? Um, it's a new thing. It's a va it's a double decker like bus. Mm. On the top deck, they have a band and they just drive around the city. Is that one of those Padres games? Oh. Uh, and on weekends in the gas lamp or they I, I hear they drove up the coast. Anyway, it's a mobile band stage that is set up on top of a bus they happen to be outside right now <laughs> so <laughs> i did see him the other day i was eating over it's the very gas cool. apparently you can rent that me and pete uh, my friend pete maybe mm. we should rent and, and do a little concert up there someday. You totally should. i don't know maybe i'll, I'll play the uh, i'll play the cowbell you're gonna do how <laughs> will you, will you wear the shirt <laughs> i'll wear a halter top for sure why not <laughs> i know you will why do i know that you would why i totally I would. You would so for the cause Wow. It goes with the wine, not personally, because everybody's different. I don't think it goes as good as all the others with the wine, but it doesn't, the wine doesn't hurt it, nor does it help it. Did you try the rind? No, I did not. Will you? Okay, I will. I'm gonna try. Of course I will. Mm -hmm. So the rind, natural, mm -hmm. right, Rob? Yeah. I mean, it's just natural. It's dried up on the edge. I'm gonna try this with an olive. No, I'm gonna try oh, it first. Oh man, time. it is weird. It's all weird. But I like the rind better than the inside, the paste. I don't, the rind is a little bit of a bitter finish. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's totally edible, meant to be eaten, all that stuff. Uh, interesting. In <laughs> the word interesting has become no, not so great. <laughs> right? Interesting. But uh, there's so many comments about this. Yeah, we well, It's read just some of them. so weird. Unique flavor came out of nowhere. Yes. Does anyone it's love it? Super different, George. Does, yeah, does anyone love it? If you love it, do chime in. Because if you love this, you will love Portuguese cheeses. If you don't, stay away from a lot of the Portuguese cheeses because this is the flavor you're gonna get. Even their aged cheese, the Sao Jorge, mm. has that bite to it. Yeah, it does. Right? Yeah. It's very distinctive and it's true only to Portugal. I don't know anywhere else that has that. Yeah, I, I know when I was in, uh, I was in Portugal and they would bring out, at restaurants, they would bring out a little <laughs> round because a lot of times they come in these little rounds mm -hmm you know, 10 ounce yep. wheels or so. With the lace around it? Right? Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of times it's a lace or it's mm -hmm. got a like, cloth on it. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of times you, you just can dig a spoon into it or spread it right into the top of it and kind of just spoon out from it. And, yes. and it, it, it keeps its shape. Um, I, I learned, cause they, they would put them out in the middle of the table wrapped in plastic. And I was like, oh cool, like, huh? <laughs> this is like butter and bread. Reason. Yeah, and I and so I so I ate it because it was there, and it showed up on my bill later. But I, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. Yeah. So far, nobody's loving it. In fact, we have a new new person on Wild Account Echo Tours. Wild Echo Tours, welcome. Thanks for the warning. Yeah, this is odd. So mm. now you know. If you like that, go for it. If you don't, but so, with the olive, everybody agrees. Maybe that's the best pairing. And again, because an olive is so vegetal. Maybe it goes yeah. so, so good with that. Try it. Maybe try mm -hmm. it with the grape, too. I, I did always, it with the grape. It was good with the grape. Yeah. Try it. Grape well, is always a good little burst to kind of balance. And, uh, oh, so fig, uh, Jason tried it with fig jam because they have extra fig mm. jam. 
delish. Maybe you need that sweet something with that. It's so unique. I wonder if it would be good if you baked it. Like you can bake it, you know, with a puff paste. I don't know if it would be good with a puff pastry, it but it would be good. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. maybe uh, with olive something tapenos. sweet in it, or, or sweet. olive tapenade. Yeah. Either one, something savory could be good. Either way, but so woo mm. Portuguese. Oh, there was. There's one that we've had from Extremadura called La Serena, mm-hmm. which is very similar, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a that's one of their traditional ones. That's a do, and they're, they're all from this um, merino sheep. So it's a certain breed of sheep, and maybe that is has to do with why they're so gamey or flavorful. Yeah, gamey the, all the, is good. The different breeds definitely give their own sort of character to to, to the various cheeses, and like I said. A che- a Manchego has a certain breed of sheep that they have to use. I mean, in order for these traditional cheeses to take on their name, they have to come from a certain place, be not just sheep, but a certain breed of sheep. And um, so it's always the merino for those. Always the merino. So that's that tradition mm-hmm. that's so true to these old world cheeses, right? Yeah. It has to be this breed. It has to be done this way. They take it very seriously. <laughs> George says, does anyone love this cheese? Us crickets. <laughs> nothing. So, so sad. But now you can go back to the Mahone if you've got any left. Mm. Or the peppers that were so good. It's an it acquired taste. Off, it wasn't awful with the wine, but that cheese alone is super strong. Maybe with a, a, a sherry. We talked about that kind of a sherry. I keep eating maybe. it because I keep, like, whenever I'm, like, not sure about something, I just keep going for it, you know? I'm just going to keep going. Okay, that's all yours. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so interesting though. All I have to say, interesting. this, in, there it goes again, because yeah, that's crazy. Mm. All I have to say is all the others, perfect with the wine. Yeah. This wine, I mean, this is just too easy. Yeah, so great, I'll versatile finish. wine. Mm-hmm. When, when Torrantes. And probably great just, just to sip on its own on a, on a sunny afternoon. Don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> Evita. Evita, yes. <laughs> Um, super good. I like it. Do you want to know what's next in the wine yeah. update? Yeah. Uh-huh. Let me see if I say it right. Have I? Do I know? Or? You do not know okay. yet. Okay. Ooh. Let's... We just determined this today. Oh, good, good. Let's hear Montepulciano. Ooh. What do we think? Uh, that's fun. Yeah? Uh-huh. Red. Montepulciano. Montepulciano. And we're going to put some Italian-y things with the Montepulciano. That's super yummy. Where's Monte Pulciano from? You have to tune mm. in to find out, Rob. I know it comes from a few, I wonder where it originates. Well, I guess I'll have to get to work. There you go. Get to studying. <laughs> get to studying. I'll read my wine Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody, Emily, my cheese sharing partner digs it. Somebody loves Yay! Yay! <laughs> the, uh, yes, Torta del Casar. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. I think our friend Octavio would love it. He well, would probably like, like, like disown me if Oct- he knew that I. Octavio wasn't. likes strong cheeses, right? He does. He loves the La Serena. Uh-huh. I mean, oh, then yeah. he would definitely He's Portuguese. like this. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. But they eat sardines. The they thing is, it. yeah. It, what's so interesting is people say, like, give me, give me your strongest cheese. Well, there's different types of strong. You have goat cheese strong. Yeah. Blue true. cheese strong. There's um, washed rind, which is our. That's what we call stinky cheese affectionately. Those are the French Epois mm. and the German Limburger. This is a completely different type of strong cheese. Yeah. And most people, this is hard to find. It's really unique. This is probably the hardest to find type of cheese. Yeah, we don't always have it. You can't always get it. We go months mm. without having something like this mm-hmm. in the case. Yeah, so Mission Hills has some. If you did love it, yes, Emily. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> if you did, and Wild Equitours mentioned the Multiple Chano from Tuscany. Oh, thank you. So we will talk about Tuscan cheeses. Nice. We'll have Tuscan cheeses on the plate. Um, Beautiful. But thank you all for tuning in. This was yummy. I'm going to finish the rest of the plate, but Rob, he has bits over there. I'm like half ready to leap over and <laughs> eat the bits. But appreciate you all tuning in. We're going to say good night. Um, what do you say? A salute. We already said salute. Adios. Adios to you all. And um, thank you. We really, really appreciate Buenos it. Buenas noches. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.